So we are here today talking with uh, Jason and we're gonna go over his awesome whiskey collection. Look at this guys. So we're gonna have Jason talk about it, talk about how he built this uh, whiskey room and then uh, talk a little bit about uh, what he likes about uh, whiskey, how he got into it and uh, what are some of his favorite bottles here. So let's go. So we're here with Jason. Hey, Jason, how's it going? Carlos, how you doing? Doing pretty good, man. Just admiring your uh, whiskey collection here and your whiskey shelf, your whiskey room. This is amazing. So you built this yourself, right? I did. I did. It's uh, definitely a labor of love <laughs> in more than one way. Well, yeah, definitely, man. And it looks amazing. So guys, Jason is a member of the North Tampa Bottle Club. Uh, I've talked about them a bunch of times on my videos. He has gracefully let us come into his home and he's showing us his whiskey room here. And this is just amazing. So we're gonna talk to him a little bit. We're gonna see uh, some of his uh, bottles here and uh, kind of go over like all the labor of love, like he put it, that, uh, he did with this whiskey room um and we're gonna drink some whiskey what are we drinking here jason i've got a little glen Morangi here um tail of cake it's excellent perfect sweet very I think good we got that there too so cheers cheers awesome and then before you had me drink you recommended something that I started out with. Which one was that one? Oh yeah, the Arden American. Just kind of a good straight Highland, little bit of smokiness, all the earth tones that you usually want from a Highland Scotch. Um, it's a good one, especially for the price. It's a good bottle. Yeah, it was it was amazing. It was really good. Um, I'm gonna have to. <laughs> I took a picture of that bottle because I'm gonna have to see that. Uh, get one for myself. So. Um, I'm gonna get to a question at the end though, but first let's talk about what got you into whiskey, man? Uh, probably what gets most of us into whiskey, young, dumb, wanting to get drunk, <laughs> you know? You start with, uh, dare I say, old Jack number seven, right? Jack and Cokes, before you know better, so. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's where it started. And then, you know, really, I kinda, I, I kinda veered off, went more into scotch. Mm -hmm. And um, I was a hardcore scotch guy for a long time. And then really kind of ventured back into really the bourbons. And uh, now I'm not willing to give up either one. <laughs> nice. So you got first into scotch. I did. And then that got you into bourbon. So how was that transition? So, you know, I've talked with a lot of guys about it. And I think it's an easier transition to okay. go from scotch to bourbon. Okay. Um, scotch is a pretty unique flavor, um, mm. pretty unique flavor profiles. Um, it's, it's high malt, right? So, yeah. Um, so even in the bourbons now, having done scotch first, high malt bourbons, I like them. Mm -hmm. A lot of the guys I know go, oh, that's awful. No, I don't want it. Yeah. Um, I like them, but they're a little bit more scotch reminiscent, I guess. Tell me a little bit about your collection here, because obviously you started out with um, the scotch and then you got into the bourbon. So how do you go about picking the bourbon that you that you buy, right? Or or is there a certain taste that you like? Is there a certain thing that you look for? Tell me a little bit about that. So I think you kind of develop a taste um, for certain things, but many times you have to just try things because you don't know what you don't know. So you try new flavors or do, you know, types and you go, wow, you know, I really like that. So honestly, um, when I seriously got into bourbon and really started to, you know, kind of collect bottles and really try different flavor profiles, um, it, it, it was really thanks to a lot of uh, whiskey tubers like yourself. Hmm. Um, watching reviews, you know, you get to hear this and, you know, hey, this might be good. And then you go out, you grab a bottle and uh, you try it. And you go, you know what? I agree. Um, some of them you go, no, I don't agree at all. <laughs> but, you know, um, and it kind of branches out from there. And then you learn, you know, like I like rise a lot. So 
Um, you learn to, okay, well, now I'm going to look for a few more ryes and different flavors. And then once you start getting into the finished ones, you know, you start to figure out, oh, you know, I like Amberana or I like, you know, rum cask finish or sherry cask finish, whatever it may be. Um, and then really, you know, I think um, it's, it's the store picks. It's the single barrels that get you because every bottle is different. Yeah, so that is true. That, that kind of keeps you running around collecting and, you know, <laughs> trying new things. Yeah, exactly. So this room first off you guys are not seeing the rest of the room but let me let me do a little pan out so you guys can see but this whiskey room let's let's concentrate on the shelf because there's a lot to talk about <laughs> <laughs> but this you built it all yourself like from the bottom to the top like everything was built by hand can you tell us a little bit about that so it just kind of centered around the idea. I had a much smaller unit in probably like most folks, you know, you start with a few bottles and then you buy some more and then you try them and then you sort of start down that road of the obsession and a few bottles turns into a lot of bottles. And then you go, where am I going to put all these bottles? Yeah. So uh, we had it in another room uh, actually in the house and it was great, but it kind of separated you from everyone else. And we're like, well, maybe we can make this flow a little bit better. So. Uh, we decided to set up in this room, and it's it's a large room. So I had to figure out, well, what can I do to kind of take this up? And uh, you know, I'd watched um, some other channels and seen some different things of what people had done, and kind of went, well, I think I can figure out something like that. And <laughs> here we are. Yeah. Oh man, this is awesome. And I love how I'm, I'm going to do a little a little. Um, close-up i love how each bottle is lighted up thank yeah. you you give me a little look see behind the curtain thank you i love how it's all lighted up you got the tv lighted up as well tv in the center in the middle this is high i don't know how you're gonna get up to those bottles there maybe have the your kid get up on top right, of the thing right, right? exactly um, no, but this is really freaking cool. And then you got a humidor over here, right? That's correct. That's awesome. Obviously the fridge, you got this, you got some of the cold beverages there. This is just an amazing setup, man. And yeah, it's, it just looks really good. So out of all these bottles, right? Because I see you have some stuff behind some stuff. Mm -hmm. But I'm also seeing that the stuff behind the stuff is just backups, right? Some of it. For the most part. Oh, I, I, okay. I've already run out of room. I'm, I'm sad to That's what I was going to ask you, right? <laughs> so now, you know, as you start running out of room, do you have a plan for that as well? Um... I guess drink more? I don't know. <laughs> no, seriously. Um, Party at Jason's house. <laughs> no, seriously drink more. But when I designed the shelves, I did design them deep enough so I can double stack them if I need to. Okay. I'm trying not to do that because I think it takes away from the look um, you know, that it was going for. Mm -hmm. um, but, dang, there's just too many good whiskeys and bourbons out there. That's that, the problem. That is true. And about how many bottles would you say if you had to, if you had to guess? That you have here there's there's about 180 185 on the wall and then i've got all my non-bourbon stuff down in the upper cabinets actually so the tequilas mezcals rums gins vodkas that's all in a different cabinet okay perfect and then you got the uh the highlighted bottles over here that you like you got the little bland scents. you got the uh the great batch of bookers there so okay yeah so. yeah you have some... Uh, a little bling, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, nah, man, but this is awesome. So I want to have a drink with you. I know that we're drinking this. You're a little bit uh, you're a little bit low there. So I want to have a drink of something that you absolutely love. Mm. And I want to drink it together with you here uh, on the camera. I've got a good one for such an occasion. So let's break out a little Jack Daniels twice barrel. Wow. That's this year's release, right? That's a 23 release, yes. Wow. Okay. Well, we're breaking out uh, breaking out uh, some good stuff then. I'm not saying that this wasn't good, by the way. <laughs> 
It's all good. That's the problem. Exactly. And what's the proof on that? This one is, um, it's actually only 100 proof. Oh, okay. Perfect. Only, I say, but. I know, right? Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Mm, that's smooth. I like these glasses. What are these? Oh, these are, uh, this is an aged in ore glass. I love these glasses. So this is like a, is this, what, what type of glass is this considered for like for aged in ore? Um, Do you know the name of it? Cause I think they call it the neat glass. I could be wrong on that. Um, I love it. It's but nice. If, if you pour to the wide part, that's actually an ounce and a half pour. Oh, nice. And then, you know, like a Glen, you still get your nose. Yeah. But... I don't know. I've got big old meat paws, so mm -hmm. it, it feels better in the hand. It's a more substantial glass. Yeah, I really like this. It feels like it feels like. Uh, yeah, I always feel like when I grab the glens, like they're gonna. Yeah, yeah. it's a little delicate. For <laughs> yeah, us guys with big exactly. Hands. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I feel like putting my pinky up. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this is good, man. I'll drink it scotch. You can get away with that. <laughs> yeah, that is true. What do you think? How do you like the twice barrel? That's really good. You're getting like, um, I'm not getting too much bananas like you usually get yeah. on the Jack Daniels. I'm getting oak, that's for sure. Um, and I don't know, there's like a, there's like a, I'm getting raisins, but also like, I don't know if that's like molasses type of thing, type of taste. Yeah. Um, I get Maple that. syrupy, mm -hmm. almost. And still, you get that rye, baking spice, peppery yes. spice on the but back. But the end. thing is, like, you kind of don't even get the rye. That's that's the crazy part about it. It's smooth. Yeah, it's like, like you do obviously get the rye spice, but it's, it's, yeah, it's really good. Now I see why <laughs> why so many uh, people go after it. Damn, that's really good. Um, so, okay. So thank you for that. Thank you for break, breaking that out. Absolutely. So that's a special bottle for you. If we had to go to the scotch, right? And we're not going to drink that now, but what is one special or favorite bottle that you have there? Um, I think it depends honestly on, <clears throat> you know, what region, um, I've got some favorites from each, um, you know, if you go up into your space sides, uh, like the Avalor, Abenad is really good, and it's a sherry bomb. That That is really good. Oh, I tasted that. That's the one that you brought to the bottle shit, right? It is. It is. That one is amazing. The um, the Craig Alecky is very interesting. The Craig Alecky 13 has uh, really got some different depths of flavor to it. Um, it's definitely not a starter scotch. It's more challenging, um, but really interesting. Yeah. Uh, as far as... And is the, that like a, more of a peated scotch or is that more of a sherry scotch? Like, like uh, if you had to describe it, what would you say? Um, unique. Unique, okay. Yeah, it's really not sherry or peated. Um, it, it's um, maybe more earthy, more musky. Okay. Um, kind of very similar to, um, or at least in the same vein as like some of the Campbell Towns, like a Springbank 10. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be kind of that very unique flavor profile. Okay. Um, that's also a wonderful, wonderful bottle. Um, the Islas, you know, I'm an Isla fan. Port yes. Charlotte 10 is phenomenal um, yes, for the money. Is. Our big Uga doll can uh, never go wrong. The Lagavulins, I mean. That's amazing, I love the Uga doll. And obviously the Lagavulins, yes. Boone I haven't, Robin, I I haven't mean, tried that Distillers Edition. It's but, good. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's good. And that's just the uh, Boone Haben 12, right? Just the Boone Haben 12. That that it's is a staple bottle. Yeah, that is like my go-to Scotch right there. Um, and I love the classic Lottie here. Yeah, and that Lechag right next to it. That's a Tobo uh, Tobo Mori um, Distillery product. That's that is a fantastic Isla Scotch. You know, I keep hearing about that one. Um, I might have to try that before I leave here. Yes, sir. Um, wow, man. So this this is just great, man. And uh, I just wanted to take a whole full full video of it. 
So what would you say to those that want to like build something like this themselves? Like, is it just like, did it take a while where there's some parts where you were just like, you know what, forget this or? Uh, no, fair question. I mean, it, it's obviously a very large piece of furniture. Um, it's three sections. I mean, it's so big that I had to build it in three sections. Each section is probably 80, 85 pounds of weight. Um, wow. So it's all three quarter ply, uh, you know, with face frames on it, half inch ply backing, um, all leg to studs, leg to each other. Um, you know, building it wasn't bad. You know, even cutting everything out and building it was, was fine. Um, I guess I'm not a finished guy because when it came to the painting, I thought I'd never get done. And I have a sprayer. <laughs> I didn't even hand paint this stuff. I have an actual H oh, HDLP wow. sprayer to do this stuff. And wow, man. I thought I'd never get done painting. And yeah. It took forever. Did you have to paint every little piece by itself or did you already have it put together somewhat and then just paint? Because uh, you said you had to do it into three different parts. Right. So there was each part already put together before you put it up yeah. or was it every section like every shelf by itself when you were painting it? no so the the shelves are you know sections so this bank of shelves i guess is all one piece and yeah and this is all one piece so i painted them like that but then okay. the lowers you know those you do have to break off the drawer fronts the drawers separate paint uh, the inner cabinets you know they're a little bit more involved to paint through but um yeah I would say, I mean, you know, you, you gotta obviously have someone working skills to, I think, build something so ambitious. Yeah. But um, if you do, or you know how to use the basic tools, I mean, I say do it. I mean, as labor love, I probably have, you know, I don't know, 40, 60 man hours into building all of this. Wow. Um, but now that I have it, man, it was worth it. Yeah. It was worth it. Yeah. And it definitely shows, man, like this is just an amazing setup you have here. Quite honestly, the whole room itself is just really cool how you have it. Thanks, man. So, yeah, it um, it's it's really cool. And I just noticed the decanter. Do you mind me asking what's in there? Sure. OK, what's, so, uh, what do we have in there? I've got some uh, early times bottled in bond. One of the best bargains in whiskey right that there. That is true. That is true. Yep. And I also see the bottle behind the, the little uh, yeah, yeah, the little yeah. thing there. Yeah, so, okay. A couple little backup bottles. Yeah, yeah. all right. And that is a banger. It is, it especially is. for the price. Yes. I think we get it here for like 13 bucks, 14 13, bucks. 13 bucks, yes, sir. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's just a good one. So, great choice on that. Thank you. <laughs> So Eventually, I want to switch it over to an infinity bottle, but that's where mm -hmm. we are for now. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that's still good for now. <laughs> oh, man, like, this is an amazing job that you did here. Congratulations, because this is just... I got no words for it, man. I wish I could do something like that here. I might actually uh, talk to you a little bit about some ideas. <laughs> But uh, this this is just good, man. And I hope you enjoy this because this is, this is just amazing. Well, you know, it's like often in our community, I mean, the whole purpose of having something like this is great. It's nice, but it's exactly what we're doing, right? It's to bring folks over, hang, mm -hmm. share some bourbon. That is true. That is true, man. And I appreciate you opening up your home, you opening up your whiskey room, letting us in, and uh, showing us your amazing collection and an amazing whiskey room here my pleasure man thanks for having me on your channel appreciate right, it man. thank you man appreciate you boom
So I just want to tell Jason that I really appreciate him inviting us into his house, into his home, letting us like freaking check out his whiskey room, his whole setup. That is amazing. Thank you, Jason. You are the man. Hope to do something like that. I hope you help me in uh, in my uh, whiskey room uh, for the whiskey corner. Uh, but I really appreciate it, guys. Jason's a cool dude. Um, and we're gonna have him on the channel some more time. So uh, definitely stay tuned for that. Till next time, please do me some favors. Like or dislike this video. Please subscribe, because that will really, really help me out. Check out the Patreon in the description. And lastly, I want you to enjoy that whiskey. Cheers.